Do you view this season as a failure? <sighs> oh my god. Uh, why are you asking me that question? Butler on the wing over Holiday. Wow. Got it! Over the top to Butler. Up and in! Jimmy Butler! Would you have liked to have defended Jimmy more? I wish I could guard him more, for sure. Rises, fires, wow. knocks it down! And then the stare down. Allen has it. Down the lane. He's wow. out of time. I think this has been the worst postseason ever. What's up, Mike here? And today we are talking about something near and dear to my heart. The career of Giannis Antetokounmpo. So welcome to the new and improved course light. And today we are doing something that is going to be quite common here. We are going to be covering just one topic that deserves this amount of covering because I used to talk about things like this on the main channel in a news type story. But now we are talking about things like that here. I feel like we deserve answers. I'm not sure if you're asking the questions that I am asking. And so the first question that I'm going to hit us all with is did Giannis get too much success too early? Because we already know that Mike Budenholzer winning the NBA championship. Save that man's job. We are going to get into the final fumbling clips of the game. I'm just heated. I'm just heated for Giannis. I'm sorry. I love the fact that Jimmy is out here doing this thing. I am a Chicago Bulls fan. And when you're a real fan of the team, we all know you remember the guys that your team drafted. So Jimmy Butler is, of course, someone who I am always rooting for. But Giannis... I mean, he literally dapped me up. And that is just a personal thing that he said, I love your YouTube videos to me. And now he is 28 years old. He is two-time NBA MVP, champion, seven-time All-Star, defensive player of the year, and most importantly, though, to me, a victim of his own success. Now look, in the 2020 season right here, we watch the Miami Heat take down the Milwaukee Bucks. Now this should have been Mike Budenholzer's last season. As you could see, Mike Budenholzer, we have this Reddit thread, do Bucks fans still believe that Mike Budenholzer should be fired even if the Bucks win the ship? And here we get the most true statement of them all. This is how actually close Mike Budenholzer was to getting fired. Let's be honest. KD was a couple inches behind the line. He would have been fired by now. This is titled Kevin Durant saves the Nets, but as we can see, two point game. Remember, Eastern Conference semifinals. Bucks go down here. Mike Budenholzer is probably actually fired. We did not know that the ramifications of this Kevin Durant beautiful Incredible. Come on. Could have been one of the best game winners ever. Only toe on the line. Only Bucks end up winning and they win the entire NBA championship. Here after the Bucks went on to win the whole thing, literally the difference between that ring was KD's shoe size. We were going down a rabbit hole here and now Kevin Durant's love of clown shoes might have cost the Nets in the playoffs. Kevin Durant's love of clown shoes might have cost Giannis a good portion of his prime. That is what this should be saying. Those are large feet. We scroll down, my big ass foot stepped on the line. It wasn't in God's plan. The kicker though here is that Durant wears a size 18 while on the court, one full size bigger than what he wears in casual settings. So if Kevin Durant, his entire career had been wearing the right size shoe, maybe Giannis has a good coach. No one thought that statement was gonna be said. So at this point in time, I really though want to talk on Giannis because during Giannis's press conference, he got heat for saying the following things. Do you view this season as a failure? <sighs> oh my God. Uh, why are you asking me that question? It's not a failure, it's steps to success. Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championships. The other nine years was a failure. There's no failure in sports. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. Now, I of course understand what Giannis is saying. Overall, you cannot judge a team or a player on a single playoff series in a single year. You have to, at the end of the day, look at an entire career. And one season certainly does not make a man. However, I'm not saying I'm disappointed in Giannis in any way. Disappointed in two things. First of all, a front office that for some reason has been relying on Chris Middleton to get healthy while having arguably the best player of his generation. By the way, quick side note, we are on the ultimate road to 1 million subscribers. That is the ultimate goal we are grinding. But first, it would be awesome if you are enjoying this video to subscribe and turn on post notifications to hit our first goal of 10K. Thank you so much for being here right now. You are a true OG. Now let's get back to the video. I feel like end of the day, the Milwaukee Bucks should get some heat front office wise for essentially keeping the same roster year after year. I mean, Brooke Lopez developed into a defensive player of the year candidate. We're not going to be saying it was the coaching that got him there. At the end of the day, now let's just pull up these clips. So let's actually consider the fact that we have a 16 point lead, 10 minutes left. 
What are we talking about? Okay, so as the Heat go on this run in front of our eyes, we need to really, really just consider some simple facts of life, I feel like, which is you have Giannis, one of the greatest defensive players of all time, literally of all time. This is a man who was able to defend a pick and roll, defend the ball handler, and still recover to DeAndre Aiden in one of the best blocks we have ever seen. That is the type of player you have in Giannis. You have a two-way superstar. Only we're going to take a break in between these highlights to hear Giannis's own words. Would you have liked to have defended Jimmy more? One-on-one? -on -one? Yes. I mean, I realize it's Drew. Is that something that you just let Bud decide that? You know, out of respect, you gotta you gotta let the coach make the adjustment and uh, I wish I could guard more, for sure. So we have two questions here. We have one, was Giannis too successful too early? Because by being successful at weirdly the right times, nobody could really point at the Bucks front office and say, you're not getting him enough help. Despite the fact that, did they really do that amazing of a job? I mean, look at the Denver Nuggets. They had Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray already in place. And then they went and got Aaron Gordon. That was a massive move. The Bucks built a solid foundation. I'm not saying that they were bad at all, actually. It's just more that when you have a super, superstar like Giannis, you have the chance to be winning multiple titles here. And I feel like they did fumble. So as we can see, watching the final highlights here, Giannis specifically does bring up Drew Holiday. And this is not Drew's fault, but at the end of the day, what are we even talking about here? Down the stretch, Jimmy Butler was nothing short of magnificent, incredible, not human. I mean, at what point do we check to see if he sold his soul? The man plays at such an incredibly high level. He's got me questioning. He has me questioning all of life. It really just goes to show how important confidence is. Because Jimmy Butler, when he is on that court, is the most confident person I have ever seen. And as we're seeing, that type of confidence leads him to just shoot over Drew Holiday time and time again. And you've got to think that at least if Giannis is on him, you know, with the fact that he's got about a foot of wingspan on him, what's going on? There's one man destroying the Milwaukee Bucks, and that is Jimmy Butler. And you're really dying on the hill of staying with Drew Holiday. Sorry, Mike Budenholzer, but you got to go. You gotta go. Now, as for Giannis, Giannis to the Knicks, I would say is a legitimate possibility. Right here, NBA exec, hearing more Giannis buzz to the Knicks. At the end of the day, I feel like Giannis, of course, has put his time in with the city of Milwaukee. Now, I don't wanna be at all offensive to Milwaukee or its fans. Bucks fans, I love what has happened. It's just that ultimately, we do end up judging a player on the amount of championships he has won. And right now, after a first round loss as the number one seed, I've gotta say, I would not blame Giannis at all for requesting a trade. Damian Lillard is out here wanting every single possible star to go play with him in Portland. But I think a team like the Thunder, who have all the draft picks in the world, plus some young stars there, or a team like the New York Knicks, who have a certainly tradable piece, I would say, in RJ Barrett, along with maybe a more veteran guy like Julius Randle. Those types of trade packages are not going to be fair value for a guy like Giannis. But at the end of the day, when a guy like Giannis says, I don't want to play here anymore, as we have just seen throughout NBA history, that ends up happening. And if that does happen, we're going to be in for one of the wildest NBA NBA off seasons. I mean, they just keep getting wilder, it feels like, to be honest. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers here on Coors Light. Thank you for being here right now. Thank you for being an OG. We are going to grind all the way to 1 million subscribers. I promise you that. Nobody's stopping us. So let me know what you think down below because we're in this together. And as always, thank you for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. Have an awesome day and cue that. Music. He's not even in my fucking league, like nowhere near me. Put somebody else on me, because I'm I'm a Taz every time we play. So He's trash.